Which do you like better, the psionic beam or the laser? When trekking across the Mojave Wasteland, it's undeniable that just about everyone will be killing countless enemies. While stopping the opposition in its tracks is everyone's priority, how you do so and what you use to reach that end is left to personal discretion. However, like all games in the series, Fallout New Vegas has a host of powerful energy weapons. If you want to indulge your inner cyberpunk and disintegrate or liquefy the opposition, then check out these incredible one-handed weapons in the base game of Fallout New Vegas. Pew! Pew pew! That's the sound a laser pistol makes, right? As ridiculous of a name as it is, Pew Pew is the enhanced version of the AEP-7 laser pistol. This little toy, while looking different, boasts the biggest difference in power over the base model of any weapon in the game. Pew Pew's damage per shot is more than six times stronger, it has an insane fire rate, better chance to score a critical shot, and it deals more than four times the damage when a critical hit is landed. The downside is how this pistol burns through batteries at an amazing speed, requiring you to reload every two shots, and also breaks down at a very rapid pace. Regardless, this is an energy weapon not to be overlooked. The largest obstacle preventing anyone from getting their hands on this arm is the collection of Sunset Sarsaparilla Star bottle caps. You need at least 50 star caps in order to gain access to this little treasure. In the entirety of the Mojave Wasteland, there are roughly 100 guaranteed star caps that can be found, and additional star caps can be randomly acquired when doing things like drinking Sunset Sarsaparilla. No matter how you go about accumulating that many star caps, once you have at least 50 in the miscellaneous section of your inventory, you'll want to head to the Sunset Sarsaparilla headquarters. Sunset HQ is located southwest of the New Vegas Strip, and more west than north of Camp McCarran. In the main reception area, there's an animatronic cowboy named Festus, who will talk your ear off if you let him. If you inquire about star caps, he'll tell you there's a prize for collecting enough, and encourage you to drink lots of Sunset Sarsaparilla. Heh, <laughs> can anyone smell a marketing technique here? Anyway, with 50 star caps in hand, Talk to Festus after learning about the prize opportunity, and choose to deposit all of your star caps. Festus will in turn congratulate you, and then flap his plastic gums for quite some time. After he's done talking, voice your concerns for prize quality, and he'll direct you to a prize vault around the corner. The hall to the vault is collapsed though, so you'll have to take a different route. To reach the prize vault, find your way upstairs, and search for an office that has a wall safe and a hole in the floor. Jump down through the hole and you should easily find the prize vault. This room is locked right up until you give Festus the right number of star caps. Inside you'll find the body of a man named Alan Marks, and next to him is the Pew Pew laser pistol. That's not all though, if you check all of the crates in the room, you'll easily pick up more than 1300 caps. Also, if you're interested in completing the quest that accompanies finding this pistol, don't forget to pick up the holotape sitting next to Alan's body. Of all the weapons which can be found in the Mojave Wasteland, the one that can likely be called the most unusual is Euclid Sea Finder. Looks can be deceiving, and even though it appears to be a useless toy gun, it actually controls orbital strike satellites. The real drawback to this gun is how it can only be fired once every 24 hours, and the satellites have to recharge. Finding the Sea Finder is very easy. In Freeside, there's a kid named Max running around pretending to shoot a girl with this gun. If you talk to him, you can buy the gun for 1,000 caps, or 20 if you can pass a level 45 barter check. Alternatively though, you can steal the gun from him while he's sleeping at night. Now, while acquiring Euclid Sea Finder is easy, getting it to call down an orbital strike is the real challenge. In order to arm the satellites, you have to head to the Helios-1 solar power plant, located north of Novak and not that far from the Gibson Scrapyard. When there, you must complete the quest, That Lucky Old Son. 
There are several ways to finish this quest, but only one way will get the Sea Finder working. Completing that lucky old sun requires you to repair Helios 1, so it generates power again. During the process, you will have several options for where to dedicate the power being generated. In order to get Euclid's Sea Finder working, the power must be transferred to the Archimedes 2 satellite. It's important to note, once the power is dedicated to one of the five options available, you cannot change where it is routed to. Therefore, if you choose to send the power anywhere other than the Archimedes 2 satellite, you will never be able to use the orbital strike capabilities of Euclid's Sea Finder. Which is a shame, because activating Helios 1 can be done fairly early, while understanding the potential advantages of the power plant likely won't be found until much later during gameplay. On a final trailing note, for anyone interested in the details of completing the Lucky Old Sun quest, you can turn on annotations or check the description for a link to a video that shows how to finish the quest for the express purpose of arming Archimedes II so Euclid's Seafinder will function. Of all the handguns in New Vegas, no matter if they fire energy or bullets, this next weapon is by far the most impressive. The Alien Blaster is a traditional Fallout weapon that exists more for its tongue-in-cheek humor than its application as a dependable firearm. The reason being how the Alien Blaster has an extremely limited amount of ammo available. This is done to balance out how it's one of, if not the, most powerful weapon in the game, seeing as how it always scores a critical hit. The Alien Blaster can be found at an unmarked alien landing site located a bit east of Brook's Tumbleweed Ranch and northwest of the Horowitz farmstead. To get this weapon, all you have to do is kill the alien captain and pick it up. However, there is a prerequisite to fulfill before the aliens will appear. At the beginning of the game, during character creation, when you choose traits, you must select the Wild Wasteland trait. If you don't have this trait, the alien landing site will instead be a mercenary camp, and the blaster will be non-existent. In trade, though, you'll be able to acquire the YCS-186 from one of the mercenaries. If you want more information on this weapon, check out the Two-Handed Energy Weapon Guide. It may be unfortunate that you have to choose between the two powerful weapons, and how you have to make that choice before you truly start to play the game. However, both weapons are very useful, so it's not as if you're being cheated by getting one over the other. Though more energy weapons exist in Fallout New Vegas, the three covered here undeniably pack a rather heavy punch. However, if you're looking for two-handed energy weapons, or oversized arms, one- or two-handed traditional guns, or possibly melee or unarmed weapons, then check out the rest of the Fallout New Vegas weapon suite from Visage Guides and Kerosene Dreams. You could run! I am trying to kill you, after all.